Welcome to Mindfulness Manufacturing. My name is Trevor Blondiel. Spending 25 years in manufacturing, I discovered the real impact we have on turnover, communication, and the ability to manage change is how we show up. That's the essence of emotional intelligence. In each episode, we bring a guest or message to expand your skills, engage your people, and grow your organization. So let's jump in. We know that People that are listening to podcasts, such as the one you're listening to here today on Mindfulness Manufacturing, we appreciate you listening to this podcast. You probably listen to other podcasts and you're probably curious and looking to gain knowledge to get a better outcome in your life. And Mindfulness Manufacturing focuses on the mind, our mindset. And today I have my friend, Ann McNeil, who is the master wealth builder with the master key to success. And you're going to learn what that is all about. And I can tell you, as being the first black female contractor in the state of Florida, operating at the level of focusing on billion dollar programs, which she started in 1982 and continues to today. And I am pumped. What do you have as a first secret you can share with us? Wow. I, the first, my first secret, I would say for all of your listeners, whether they're in manufacturing, construction, or professionals, entrepreneurs, whatever the title is, niche to be rich, niche to be rich would be my uh, uh, takeaway, which starts with the mindset for success. Niche to be rich in one thing, starting with the mindset for success. And for me, that mindset for success started in the construction industry. That would be my one takeaway for today. So you got focused in one area, which you, which you grew to this amazing company and how, because a lot of us do get focused on shiny objects. How did you get disciplined? How did you end up construction? If, if someone's kind of maybe not focused on exactly on, on what, how they want to grow their career uh, in manufacturing construction, you know, how, how did you start? Well, actually, uh, Trevor, it all started for me in, uh, actually on December 31st, 1979 at 9 p.m. when I picked up a copy of the book, Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, and my husband and friends decided to go out and celebrate the new year, I decided to stay home and read this book. But Trevor, as I began to read the book, the book began to read me. The author in the Desire chapter asked me four questions, but he gave me six steps. And I call them six keys to success. And uh, if I may share those with your listeners, I think that it would help people to understand how do you niche to be rich. And <laughs> and the first question the author asked me, and I'm going to ask all of your listeners, how much money do you want? Nobody ever asked me that before. And the second question he asked me was, what are you going to do to get the money? And therein lies the one thing. He said, Ann McNeil, I made it personal. Number one, how much money do you want? Number two, what are you going to do? Which means some kind of product or service you're going to sell to get that money. Number three, he asked me by what date do you want the money by? Number four, he asked me for my plan of action. Actually, what is your plan on exactly how you're going to make that money? Number five, which is the fifth step to riches, he said, develop a action step, which we call an action plan which some of us call an affirmation statement by taking step number one, number two, number three, and number four, create an affirmation statement. And then number six, he said, recite that statement twice a day. Recite that statement twice a day, once upon arising in the morning and once before you retire at night. And those were the six keys to niche to be rich. Now I'll repeat them again. Number one, how much do you want? Number two, what are you going to do? Number three, by what date? Number four, what's your plan of action? Number five, create an affirmation statement. And number six, recite it twice a day. That is the key to riches, by niching to be rich in one thing. And for me, Trevor, when I read that on that night, I, I didn't get it. I, I really didn't get it like millions of us that read that book. Uh -huh. But I would tell you over the years, yes, over the years, I learned how to create a mastermind group of accountability and to use those six keys for every area, not just of my business, but of my life. And today, Trevor, five businesses later, I am learning. I am learning because you never really learn. It's a journey. It's not a destination. But I am still learning how to niche to be rich in one thing. And once we understand, Trevor, in manufacturing and in construction, if you can manufacture one item and understand the systems and processes and also where's the profitability in that one item, 
you can then, you know, perfect that and then you can go on to, you know, add another item and another item and another item. Oftentimes, Trevor, though, in manufacturing, we want to start with everything at once and not realizing that it's sometimes it's just too many things to focus uh, on the mindset, if you will, for success on too many things. Because remember, Trevor, a confused mind makes no decision. It's just too, <laughs> too confusing. A confused mind makes no decisions. Yes. Because we see a lot of shiny objects we want to chase uh, each day that that can be different. So that that's for an entrepreneur. And that can apply to individuals and organizations as well. I've got a client that I'm working with and very smart and works for a great organization, uh, but doesn't really see that path to where does his success lie? And I haven't had this conversation, uh, but this may be maybe a good way to lead in if someone wants to progress their career, but doesn't really know how to do that. Is this part of the part of the concepts and of just getting clear? Oh, absolutely. And let me share this. Uh, I tell my coaching clients and my consulting clients, if you focus on the money, the passion will show whether or not that widget, we call it a widget, is for you. So oftentimes, Trevor, uh, professionals and entrepreneurs, we have a passion about something we want to do, but it may not connect with your life, work, profitability to support you and your vision and your goals. But if you focus on the money first, now let me say this very clearly, it's not about the money. It's about who you must become in the process of learning how to make the money. Then you can take that money, do whatever you want to do with it. But again, if you focus on the money, how much doing what by when, then you can vet your idea and maybe the plan is not there to make the amount of money you desire. And this is what happens oftentimes with professionals. We want to make more money in our career, but are we willing to become that person? Maybe you need a certification. Maybe it requires additional experience. Maybe it requires changing careers. Maybe it requires rethinking your ideas. Maybe it requires a longer time frame. Maybe it requires a mastermind of accountability to vet your plans and your ideas. And so, again, if you focus on niching to be rich with an accountability group and you have great clarity about that widget, then the plan over time will emerge. So that goes for professionals, it goes for manufacturing companies, and the leaders in those firms also. The concept of talking about money, right? Sometimes you'll have a conversation, well, I just want to add value and help others. I'm not really concerned about the money. Uh, But at the end of the day... Uh, we need this money, right? Like, what, what do you say to someone that's just like, oh, I don't really want to focus on, uh, I just want to serve others? Well, I get that often when I am speaking nationally and also locally. And this is what my response is. People would tell me, oh, I just want to be philanthropic. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's walk through that idea. Oh, I just want to serve my, my church or serve my, okay, that is excellent. How are you going to finance that vision? How are you going to finance that mission? How are you going to tithe to your search if you don't have money in order to give? How are you going to be philanthropic without the money? Sure, you can give your time, but how do you pay your bills? And this is why I share with my clients. I said, first thing you want to do is start small right where you are and give. It could be $5. It could be your time. But at the same time, learn how to make the money and then give the money away. Let me say mm-hmm. it again. You learn how to, yes, you learn how to make the money and you give the money away. You see, when <laughs> Andrew Carnegie asked Napoleon Hill to come up and create this philosophy of success, right? He paid Charles Schwab. $70,000 as a salary, but he paid him a million dollars bonus. This is all manufacturing, right? It's the beginning mm-hmm. of the U.S. Steel Corporation. Yes. So we're talking to manufacturers. We're talking to your clients. We're talking to your listeners. Carnegie started with absolutely nothing. He started with nothing, but he became one of the largest philanthropic individuals during his time. He gave the money away, but he could not have given the money away if he did not learn how to make the money first. And then also many of the people in his mastermind also became multimillionaires. They learned to give and to serve. First, by learning how to make the money and then later giving it away. You see, you cannot go to that furnace and say, furnace, furnace, give me fire. 
the <laughs> furnace is going to say, give me wood and I'll give you fire. You've got to put the wood in first. And so for those of us who are listening and we're saying, but I don't want the money. I just want to serve. I just want to give. And that is awesome. That is great. And we applaud you for that. But the more you give away, the more you're going to receive in terms of people you can help in terms of learning how to make the money. Because oftentimes you can teach that man how to fish if you become a great fisherman or fisherwoman versus giving them the fish. So those are my thoughts, actually, Trevor, in terms of people who who, who want to skip over the work. Because that's really what this is about. It's about the work we must all do internally. And that's why principles of success like Thinking for Rich, Napoleon Hill Foundation, and so many others that are out here that teach us, but we've got to put the wood in first, Trevor. There's this whole concept that we talk about is abundance, a mindset of, a, of abundance or a lack mindset. And when you have, I've practiced it on myself and, and the exact mindset that you're talking about and the more i can help others and, and you know whether it's leaving a good tip for someone that didn't expect it whether it's just you know taking a phone call and and helping someone that needs it or maybe asking and i've got to balance it and sometimes i got to say no because i stay in that mindset because i've done the exercises that ann talks about and i believe that's how i'm still surviving today my seventh year business is that whole concept of think and grow rich and when you see the title, you think it's like, oh, well, that's just uh, may lead you to, to one level of thinking. You think, well, hold on. this book was written in 1937. What can really still apply? Well, there's a reason that's still being read and bought today is because those concepts work. So yeah, I resonate with the whole mindset of if you, if you have that concept of abundance that you can give and you're going to get back, but if you don't have anything to give and you're on a shoestring budget and you haven't really applied yourself and pushed, you can't get to that level to serve more people. And if you really are a giving person and you want to give to more, well, you got to build yourself up so that you can give more. Is, is that what I'm hearing in? Absolutely. 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 You know, giving, uh, you know, speaks to a positive mental attitude and it could be something as simple as a smile, you know, gratitude mm. and just being thankful and grateful for just every breath we take, I think COVID uh, has taught us the power of the breath, the power of something as simple as the breath and just being grateful. And so when you send those vibes out, when you send that spirit out, it emanates through you to others. And, and when you think about total strangers, if you pass a stranger by and you just give that person a smile or a nod, it, oftentimes they will return that smile and that nod. But what we don't realize, Trevor, sometimes is that when we talk about a mindset of abundance, we're sending that smile and that love out to the universe and it reverberates. It, rever it reverberates like that, um, that, that stone that's skipping on the, on the wave comes mm -hmm. back to us the same. But also do the opposite. You see someone and you give them a stern frown and you see how they respond. They will give you back what you sent out. <laughs> and that also reverberates. And so, I, yeah, I share with my clients, we have to be very mindful what we send out because we do receive that which we give. And that comes from the spirit of abundance and it comes from a mindset. And it's, it has nothing to do with what money you have in your pocket. I'd like to share a quick story I just read this morning. I'm reading yeah. another book from the Napoleon Hill Foundation called The Mastermind. And it is actually the life story of Napoleon Hill himself. A very different take on Think and Grow Rich and the stories are not repeated. But Napoleon Hill was sharing a story about the mindset shift that is required even during a time of poverty. During a time of poverty. And he talked about how he had lost a lot of money and he was down to his last. I mean, literally last. Um, and he had um, an idea to to print uh, a magazine called Hill's Golden Rule, but he had no money in which to actually do the publishing of the magazine. So he said, listen to himself, he's talking to himself, he said, I have no money, but I need this, this uh, publisher to really consider uh, advancing me the money in advance, right, to, mm -hmm. to do this job. So he knew the publisher went to a certain place, which was a, a club, a private club for lunch, every single day at the same time. And he said he went to his hotel and he put on the finest clothes he had in his wardrobe. I mean, really got us a good haircut, shined his shoes, and he bought a cane, a walking cane, right? Just a little walking cane to look prosperous. And he waited until he knew the guy was going to be approaching 
him, the, 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 the uh, club, and he said he started walking toward the club slowly until he saw the guy coming in view. And as the guy, as they both approached the door, he shares the story. Now he said, in my mind, I knew I was so poor. I had no money whatsoever. I had no way of getting money. Mm -hmm. He said, but I could not allow the negative thoughts of poverty to control me. And so I had to have an abundant mindset, a generous mindset, and thinking about my definite chief goal, my definite chief purpose, which was to spread this philosophy of success and personal achievement. And he, he said, so when the guy pushed they reported each other and they met at, at, at the door. The guy said, well, my goodness, Mr. Hill, you look mighty prosperous. And at that <laughs> moment, he realized that shifting your mindset worked. He said, the guy did not know I could not afford the lunch if I had to pay for my own lunch. And he said, because the guy thought he looked so prosperous, he assumed he was prosperous. And he mm. asked Mr. Hill, he said, would you join me for lunch? And of course, Hill said, of course. Now, the rest of the story is that the guy did advance him $50,000 to start the printing and also became the publisher of the magazine. The point of sharing the story, when you niche to be rich and you're very clear about your definite chief purpose and your definite aim and you know exactly what you want, this podcast is created to encourage you to shift your mindset first. Don't think about what you don't have. Don't give that any energy. Think about what you desire. Think about what you do have. Think about the good you're going to do even if it's in a philanthropic way for the world and watch the world give you back exactly what you send out. So those are just some thoughts. And that just gives me energy just listening. You look proper, prosperous because you, you look how we feel. And, and, and we had talked about this on the podcast before. If you walk out on the shop floor in the morning and you look miserable, people are gonna, probably going to feel miserable especially if you're the leader. So that whole mindset of how you feel is going to compound that. And sometimes I have friends that just seem to have one problem after another, but they're always talking about problems. And then they don't understand why problems keep on happening. <laughs> and it's kind of like, maybe if you don't think about problems and you think about what's the outcome you're looking for, like, why wouldn't we want to think about outcomes that we want to have? I don't know. Well, Trevor, let me just respond to that. Well, I can share, you know, it's the training of the brain. You know, we don't have this conversation where we're taught how to train our brain. And the way you train your brain is through the power of autosuggestion, affirmation mm -hmm. statements. You just gave you just gave an example of what does not work. And in in the person who constantly talks about what they don't have, the misery and and all of those things. But the way you train your brain and your mind and your spirit to what you do want, it is the principle of auto-suggestion, the power of repetition. Let me show you how it works. So you think about a commercial. A commercial, whether it is any kind of commercial you can think of, whether it's on TV or whether it's on social media, uh, you know, uh, advertising boards that you drive by the street, they are constantly bombarding our minds to buy products that we don't need and <laughs> don't want. But our mind, wait now, wait, wait, wait. How often have you bought something that was on an info commercial after midnight and you just knew you needed to have that slicer, that dicer, that pot, that pan, that knife? Don't laugh now because we, we, we've one. all done it the hula hoop, all of those things. And then we pile our house up with those things as if they're going to work on their own. <laughs> no, the power of the advertisers have convinced us to purchase things that we don't want and don't need. And you have to ask yourself the question, how are you using intentional congruence? How are you using the power of subliminal seduction to encourage yourself towards your own dreams and your own goals and your own aspirations? And it is, I, I, I actually do, I have a uh, clarity mastermind that I've created. And this clarity mastermind group, we focus on training our brain to think positive thoughts every single day. We only meet once a month. We have exercises that we do every day to focus on what I call the 30-day test. What is that one goal to niche to be rich that you desire? Where's your affirmation? Are you reciting it every day? And, and that is what we do. And when I tell you, Trevor, the success that people have had as a result of using this Clarity Mastermind, right, as a part of our McNeil Factor system, it is the same process and system that advertisers use to convince us to buy products we don't need and don't want, you can use the same system of subliminal seduction on yourself by creating your own affirmation statement for your desire. That's that's the key to the six keys, the niche to be rich. It's just uh, amazing to hear because I'm just, I can't help but think of where you are in your career and, and you know, how 
you've got these five businesses built up, but now you're in a position to, this is not woohoo. <laughs> these are, this is what you've done. You're, you're, you're not someone that is talking about lessons. You're talking about stories. This is where you got to where you are. You're sharing your, your abundance. You're saying, Hey, th this is how it works. You've got masterminds where, you know, you get people together to, to, to practice this. So this is a great time for me to tell well, how did I meet Anne? Yeah. Think and grow rich. I, I, Jen Sincero, you are a badass. So that was another one of my uh, books on, on my website. That I do book reports on, and I thought, you know, where did all that come from? And we kind of go back to think and grow rich and reading that. And so one of the things that I've practices that I do now is in the morning, I write down three items that I'm grateful for and then an intention for the day. So if you listen to the podcast, you know, I've been, I'm on a journey to become a better speaker. And so I went to my first speaking convention in Florida and don't really know too many people, uh, but pretty great, generous vibe. So I do my gratefulness and I, and I said, I want to meet Tom Singer. And Tom is, is now a friend of mine and I didn't know him at all. And uh, he, he's a host of, of, a, of a great podcast. Cast and, and he was a former guest on here. And I go to this early session that I hadn't planned to go to. And I sit beside this other gentleman, his nickname's Shark. And uh, him and I kind of headed it off and he walks out. And all of a sudden I see him talking to Tom. They walk over to me and they said, hey, we're, we like to gather a dinner and with people that are new. And I know you're new, you want to come to dinner. So I end up sitting, Tom's on my right and Anne's on my left. <laughs> and these are two people I didn't know hours before, but I knew I was going to meet great people. I had envisioned it. And, and now I'm you know, friends with Anne and Tom, and then start talking to Anne about this whole concept of think and grow rich. And when I told the story at the dinner and I don't, I don't care. It seemed kind of weird, but it, hey, it's what I did. And here we are. So it was a good story. And then now, Anne, you, you're, you're a master wealth builder from these concepts of think and grow rich. So that's just my personal story of like, try it. What have you got to lose? And what, what well, do you... I know, no, I just want to just make a statement about lose uh, as we prepare. Uh, I just want to encourage our listeners that it's not easy and it's not perfect. We're not perfect. And we will have ups and we will have downs. But just imagine having a a great, great, great accountability group of like-minded and like-spirited people who are willing to hold you accountable. When you're down, they can pick you up, right? And when you're, when you're up, they can elevate you higher. So I just want to just encourage our listeners to consider connecting yourself with the mastermind group. Just wanted to share that. Well, the mastermind group, and, and we've talked about this, Anne, where I have had one for four years with my coaching group. And there's no way, even items that happened in the last couple of weeks, that I can be able to help more people and have the success that I have without others. Uh, th and, and this a whole accountability of what you're talking about it's real. And if you're in a manufacturing plant or construction, you can do this with a few people at work. You can do this with colleagues, maybe someone that you went to school with. What, what Anne's talking about here, and we're going to leave some links in the show notes, and she is the mastermind master. And I, I've even gotten better at, at, at facilitating our masterminds from Anne's deep work in this and her success. Take your smallest situation and say, hey, you know what? This is where my end goal looks like. And look at the back at those six steps that Anne started in the beginning and, you know, st practice those. And I'd love to he love to hear from you on, on how that works. But having that last element that Anne just added is a game changer because we get busy and we get focused on the next idea. When you have this group, you got to come back to and say, okay, so what is, what is your outcome you're looking for? And are you saying it twice a day and, and what's happening? And that, that is just some of the elements, man, I could talk to you all day, Anne, because I always learn something when I talk to you. What, what's the last message you want to leave our, our, our listeners with? Because one thing that I'm feeling right now is already just, I'm re-energized on my positive mindset. I, I would say, you know, think, think and grow rich, but niche to be rich in your mindset by focusing on one thing. I gave the six steps. And if any of your listeners would be interested in getting a copy of those, if they would text me at the number 55678, that number again is 55678. If you text that number at 55678, and in the subject line, you just put the word and, A-N-N, -N, in, in the chat. If you put A-N-N -N in the chat and text that number, 55678, Trevor, I will send those niche to be rich six keys to success out to all of your listeners, regardless of when they're listening to this, because 
it's one thing to tell people what they should do, but it's something else to give them one thing to do. Mm. One takeaway Ooh. from today is download the six keys to success and niche to be rich in one thing in manufacturing and also in your profession. And I will guarantee you, if you're willing to do the work, you will niche to be rich. Thank you. I love it. That, that, that will be in the show notes. And, and I challenge you, I'm telling you, if you've been following this podcast, I believe I've probably built some credibility with you. And I'm telling you, Anne's the real deal. She is a, a genuine, uh, giving, abundant person. And uh, just blessed to have you on the podcast today. And even on your vacation, you showed up, and today. So I, I appreciate you so much. And, and the listeners do as well. So you have an awesome rest of your vacation. Thank you. Hey, folks. Appreciate you taking the time to join us today. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with someone. Haven't subscribed yet? Do it now. Remember, if you want results, the key is increasing your awareness of how you show up.